Fast Track Live. I'm joined with Matt Barbs, who's joining us from here at Bagoni, and Dr. Courtney McNamara. And tremendously excited about this session. We're going to show you some insider secrets that I know Matt's been working on over the past several months to really optimize ChatGPT as your personal assistant, something that would have been unthinkable uh, as little as six months ago, but now has opened up a world of new possibilities. And by the end of this session, you're going to walk away with knowing how to use ChatGPT to accelerate your research, to improve your skills, to help you learn faster, and to enhance your organization so you don't feel lost and go in circles. So uh, I, I'm really excited about this. And again, this reflects the theme of Fast Track. We, we created this group specifically to help you avoid some of the hardship that we had as graduate students. Uh, it, it's that cliche, it's a marathon, not a sprint, but it's even worse because there's so many obstacles and pit holes and landmines along the way that are all too easy to fall into that can cause endless frustration and headache. So we don't want you to go through that like we did, and that's why we've created tremendous support. If you haven't already, join our Facebook group. You're going to have direct access to all of us. We're, we're all in the group. Um, and some additional resources at the end of this, we've created a specific set of chat GPT prompts that you can use and, and apply tomorrow if you want. And you're going to be so glad you did. So with that, I, I just want to say, uh, you know, uh, Courtney, what, what are you trying to get out, out of this session? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, basically along for the ride today. So I know very little about chat GPT, um, as we talked about in, in other sessions. So I'm just really curious about what we can learn from Matt today. I'm really excited. Awesome. And yeah, so Matt, take us uh, right here at the beginning. I mean, what's kind of your relationship with ChatGPT been like the past few months? How has it evolved and where, where you're at now? Well, I think I would like to start with like thinking about or drawing on a Donald Brunsfeld quote is that there's things that we know we know, there's things that we know we don't know, and there's things that we don't know we don't know. And ChatGPT allows us to access all those things. So things uh, I think that would have taken me, well, I mean, months have, you know, been whittled down into mere days or hours in some cases. I think um, another one of the more positive things is that it, I think looking back, it would have stopped me from doing a lot of rabbit hole research where it focuses you on the main mechanisms or contexts of your research questions, what I think is really important. And, uh, yeah, it's just a sounding board to your own ideas and to see, you know, how good they are, how they can be improved. Uh, it's just an all alternative consciousness, basically, that, you know, allows you to reflect on your own. So I mean, I'm uh, really it, excited to, to it, share it today. That's awesome. I mean, in a way, one of the things that a lot of people in this community and watching struggle from is they don't get some of the support, guidance and regular feedback they need. And, and, and in a way, ChatGPT becomes like a, a, an assistant professor in your corner. You've talked about it being, Matt, for you, like a, a, a personal assistant. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that relationship? Well, yeah. Well, I think the main thing is that you get instantaneous feedback, is that you are, you are in dialogue with something that, you know, you might have before taken a week or two weeks or three weeks to talk to your advisor about. Now you can access that almost virtually right away. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in major questions, for example, I've been working in acquiring new methodology in working with you, natural experiments. I learned in most of the, you know, technical know-how about uh, natural experiments in probably a month or less. So, I mean, and that was without Although, you know, I do have a statistics background, it's a, it's, it's a new method. Usually you have to, you know, ask a lot of people or draw on, you know, some outside help. But I was able to, you know, self-learn self basically um, yeah. using it uh, with the basic questions I have. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think, Matt, we should get get right down to specifics. Awesome. Because I think a lot of people are going to want to know, well, how, how did you do that? Because really the mastery that you've acquired in quite a short time would not be that simple to do from, from a book or even taking a class. So I want to get to some concrete examples. So we're going to go through how to use it in your research, how to use it to build up skills, and how to boost your productivity with ChatGPT. So I'm going to share my screen, Matt, and um, okay. get you to give us some some examples uh, of the prompts that uh, you like to use. So tell, tell us a little bit about 
how you've been using ChatGPT for your research. I know one you talked about was on generating ideas. Yeah. So I, I think like in the background when I'm using ChatGPT is I'm always kind of thinking in a, what are my independent variables or what, I, what are my inputs and what are my outputs? And I think um, when I'm trying to uh, utilize the model is that I start like, for example, if I'm entering into a field or a new field, like in, for example, the pensions and health area, is that, you know, I, I ask, for example, what are the main mechanisms linking um, pensions to health, which... Okay, so, so let's put that in. Is, is that how yeah. you would put in the prompt? So that's, that's, one, uh, that's, that's how I'd enter into a field. What are the same... Okay, so if we do that, it starts giving you... And one thing that a lot of students need is they need some kind of conceptual framework or a way right. of understanding the relationship between X and Y or two different right. phenomena, which is very and fundamental then, uh, across across the sciences. And here you have um, several, several. It gives right. you a, a framework right away. These kind of pathways link these two phenomena. So um, each, each one of these points, for example, could be an entry point into a subset of literature for a literature review, for example. That would that would allow you to, to structure your thinking going forward. And remember, or not remember, but just, just I should, should really emphasize is that ChatGPT is an entry point, not an end point. Is that you are still going to have to acquire the knowledge, you're, st you're still going to have to pr you know, give it prompts. And so there is a little bit of a, it, it is maybe inter iterative where you go see, you know, it structures basically how you should approach learning or approach understanding a relationship and say, for example, um, if we took one of those points, financial stability, well, that's a good way to start a literature review is that, you know, how, how would that affect the relationship? And you, you, you can go in um, and start finding academic articles about it. Yeah. So, so it gives you, right. So you don't feel kind of lost at sea, especially if you're starting fresh on a topic. Right. Um, it gives you an entry point. One of the things that I like to do is say, maybe there's an area here in financial stability. I, I like to ask chat GPT, um, what are some gaps in the research? Now, right. this version's only updated to 2021, but sometimes right. the research in two years, apart from COVID, doesn't revolutionize overnight, except right. in some rare cases. So I, I'd like, to, to say, for example, what is a current, uh, uh, or, or one, it'll give us a disclaimer, a gap, so, research gap on the relationship between financial stability and health of older persons. And uh, it, it'll also come up with some potential ideas. Many, oh. many students have trouble defining their topic and with clear boundaries that's well-defined and that they can actually do. And... Uh, and sometimes, not always, ChatGPT can give you uh, give you some prompting. Here it's saying there's a need for longitudinal studies. Here's a need for intersectionality on uh, accumulation of disparities. I mean, this, some of this is specific to this topic. But yeah, and Matt, is, have you approached it like this before? Or tell, tell us a little bit about who, how you've engaged here. Well, I think one of the main things is that I, I think when you're going in the structure of kind of finding out a new topic. I like doing the mechanisms first mm. is mechanisms and context as a main point of entry, because mm. I feel, I feel like the, the research gaps, um, you can start making better or more focused questions when you know mechanisms. I so, see. so when you're prompting it is that, you know, what are, what are the biggest research gaps, uh, on, uh, looking at financial stability as a mechanism between uh, pensions and health. Uh, so, okay, so, so you would, might have changed this this prompt here the, to be more. Yeah, it's, and that, I think the, my one of my main points here is that you're always kind of doing an iterative mm. uh, process where you have one prompt, it gives you the world of possibilities, and then you add those possibilities into your prompts. So, so how would you update this kind of prompt? Uh, so, what, what would you so, say? So um, under what context would the uh, 
relationship between financial stability and health change. Okay. And health change. Um, so I, I, I'm also aware of that. You, you also think like uh, a sociologist. So you're coming with right. some background. Well, and I, I think, yeah. I, I mean, those are the two mental models that really are reflective of all research, right? There's yeah. either mechanisms or there's different contexts when that relationship change. Yeah. Mediating and moderating uh, relationships. Yeah. And uh, this, this is really, really helpful. Uh, and I think getting this point about mediating, moderating relationships, I think we can use that as an example for skill building as we come up. If some, some of you watching or some of that might be old hat for you, some of it might be a new way of thinking about uh, right. causal relationships. Um, one thing I want to cover too, you, you also mentioned in research, and one of the areas I found quite powerful uh, is editing. Um, and so just as this keeps running, you can see that this gives even more. I like the prompt you put there, Matt, because this even, you know, you might iteratively take your first prompt and realize, let's get, let's drill down to a little more specifics that we can yes. test and look at in data. And, and this gives you more concrete ideas. You could see, yeah. for example, if in, in different societies with different social safety net systems, like the U.S. versus, say, Denmark, um, the pension, the financial stability, health relationship changes. So um, I, I like this. It really gets to clear, testable ideas. Um, okay. So tell, tell us a bit about how you approach editing with ChatGPT. Uh, well, so with editing, or I just would like to finish up a point on yeah. what you just said, um, actually, is that the key is, as you'll see in one of my broader tips for using this model, is to really use the language of that field or subfield because it seems to have more accurate answers when you're starting to use the language. Mm. And when you're building your prompts, the more detail you have in your prompt about the type of relationship, how it changes, who it targets, who, um, et cetera, et cetera, the better your answers will be. Yeah. So one thing that I would like to really stress to everybody who's trying to use it is that it, it is to get really good prompts in my, my, um, my using it is that it is really iterative is that you're starting yeah. to build a language or a question with all the language of that subfield or whatever your field is. And the more that they use expert language or the language of that field, the more the answers are reflective of what you want, where yeah. it will give you buzzword or quote, like very technical words from the, the literature, et cetera, et cetera. So, don't so, be so, so Matt, you, sometimes I've seen with ChatGPT, you want to give it a prompt and tell it, hey, ChatGPT, think like a Nobel Prize winning economist and come up with this. Do, do, you, do you try to load that into your prompts? I, I have, I have, you, I haven't, I've used like drawing on top academic journals or okay. I frame where it should be um, drawing upon. So, so uh, how, show, have, show, 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 just run with that. How would you do that here? Um, so like an example would be uh, drawing drawing on top journals in epidemiology, public health, yep. and sociology, yep. detail how or detail or detail all uh, ma or major sources that explain the relationship okay. between uh, financial uh, stability and health using an author date format. Okay. Well, wait, but this won't give us citations that are actually. Well, it, it, it actually, it, it, do, it, it, it gives you some, or it'll okay. give you top, a top ones in the field. It, it will. Okay. Because sometimes yeah. GPT so, just so hallucinates I, and makes stuff up. So you got to check it. Let, yeah, let's see what it I, gives I, Sometimes you really got to check when you're looking for sites. Um, yes. But uh, that's my one, one caveat here is okay. that you do have to check, but it does give you a lot. So this is giving us some general concepts and theories and themes and authors. Okay. So it'll give us some, well, that, that's a real article. Um, yeah. 
so that that's helpful. Stepto Kibimaki. I don't know that one, but uh, Wilkinson Pickett I know is a real one. So so and Camilo, so that's accurate. So okay, so so not all the sites are just made up. No, no. It I would say it's probably about 80 80 percent of the time it's correct. Okay, so big warning label. Don't don't blindly rely but on it, it. I mean, it's it's helpful to see. Yeah. And I this agree. is this is what it what I um, this is how I would say drilling down into a field would go. Yeah. So I like this. It almost says you take your topic and then you think you've got it nailed. That's fine. But just kind of poke at it a bit with Chat GPT and see what where that leads you, and it can maybe generate new ideas or thinking about it in a different way. Right. But it's almost like here's your personal assistant friend kind of telling you, hey, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Courtney, any thoughts for you on this before we go on to editing? Yeah, yeah. I really like I really like the idea. I also really like the suggestion here at the end that it recommends conducting literature searches and PubMed and Web of Science. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if we can ask it to to identify some keywords for us for a systematic literature review. It, it probably could. I yeah, mean, I already absolutely. Kind of this here. If you ask for keywords, and then one thing we often do, and you'll see in our, our systematic review training, is look for keyword variants. So what I ask it back your list for you. Let, let's let's ask it right now. Yeah, exactly. Can you identify keyword variants for a systematic review on financial stability and health of older adults? Um, but this is it. I think this is also the idea. Use it, it, almost any task that you're doing in your research. Think, can Chat GPT help me with this? Or even Absolutely. just check it. And that gets you instant, rapid feedback. It might feel confident, like, "Yep, I'm kind of on track," or, oh, well, here's a stone I didn't, uh, I, I didn't unturn. That might be useful." I don't want to do too many prompts because I think I've got a limit on how many I can do uh, per hour uh, yeah, there, or, or timeline. So I do want to save some for the next ones. Um, now I do. Okay, I've seen these terms come up. These seem quite plausible. Uh, one of the approaches we use, as, as you know, is we take from existing systematic views, so we're not reinventing the wheel. But just kind of face value, these look pretty good. Uh, what do you th What do you think, Courtney? Yeah, it's a nice double check. Yeah, yeah. But again, I would still rely on previous literature and sort of the techniques we've already identified. But this is a nice way to say, oh, oh yeah, I could have, I could have said this. Could have yeah. this as well. Yeah. Courtney, I think that's a great, a great thing that you just said. Is that it is a reference point for you? Absolutely. Is I, I think it's. At the bare minimum, checking your, it's like checking your work for problem sets. Yep. Is that, you know, if if you nailed all the ideas, great. Um, you know, if you didn't, well, there's some more learning to do. Yeah. But either way, it's a low stakes way. And I think that's the key here, a low stakes scenario to check uh, what you're doing. Um, nice to see people saying, is this being recorded? Yep, we're recording it. You guys can replay. Um, so People, people appreciate exploring the research ideas and prompts here. Uh, you were going to say something, Courtney. I didn't mean to cut yeah, you off. Yeah, don't enter it in because I know you have limited. But Matt, do you have any idea whether you could ask it to like write a search for you like in using like Web of Science language or would it be able yeah, to do I, that? Absolutely. I think huh. like and the first thing is like if you think it, it can probably do it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, I like that. I like yeah. that. If, like, so, like, don't be afraid to try. And, you know, it takes some learning. Uh, like, you know, for a, a while, I was maxing out 25 questions every three hours for days because, you know, you, do, you have to kind of get uh, used to the model. But, like I said, is that, you know, you can play around with it and see, oh, if I use this language and just, I really try to think in variables in in tightening up what my outcome is. Like what I think through my mental processes of how I approach something, and then I turn that into variables. Well, I think about X, Y, Z to get to my outcome. Yeah. Why? Uh, and, and that can work for qualitative, quantitative research, even lab research acro across the board doing experiments. So um, I like the math. It's quite a flexible framework. Okay, look, I, I, I want to... Okay, move on because there's lots of great stuff here. Sure. Um, and uh, people can also reach out directly afterwards if you, you want to tap Matt's thinking on this. But um, let, let me go on. Just editing very quickly because I think editing is a little bit more straightforward. 
Um, what do you do, Matt? You can't upload the whole document. How do you, how do you approach editing? I, it's, it's usually like a page at a time, but like some of the prompts that I'll use for editing is that how, how would you um, make um, or how would you reduce my word count through yeah. editing? That's, That's a big one where, and uh, another one is like, can you tell me what I am trying to get across in this uh, in that's, this page. that's really nice because you, you, you want to have your main points be clear. I think that's really important because sometimes, uh, I've seen students come in, I can't see what their big message is. And as a supervisor, Courtney, you've probably been there. You're just lost and just say, chat GPT, read what I wrote. And what are the big main points I'm trying to say? I, I find that really helpful. A little frustrating at the moment that you can only get one page at a time, though, if you want to get a full. Yeah, uh, I like I, I, I think I think they're increasing how much you can output. And I think there are other websites or that are focused spe specifically on uploading a whole document. Yeah. I just don't know yet. And if there anyone in the comments knows about that, that would be awesome. Yeah. Because but. Like you can see how like you're you can ask it to be the editor that you've always wanted. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, and we say we say that editor, you know, when I pop in, I like to say, okay, um, please edit for X journal. Sure. And because it can then take that style of that journal and put it in that kind of language. And mm -hmm. and if you just test it out yourself, uh, if you say change it for an economics journal, sociology, or health journal, take the same abstract and write it up slightly differently. Uh, and yeah, well, that. someone Please. just in the chat said chat GPT splitter.com. So I'm learning things already. This is excellent. Yeah, but, it, it, yeah. exactly. And uh, El Elma's got a point about can we try to add um, citations on each keyword? Um, that's a little more complicated. Uh, do you want to say something about that, Matt? Um, like, so I, I would say chat GPT because it's not linked to any academic sources. Is this, I, I would not. I would not go down the rabbit hole of trying to draw on major sources or up-to-date sources. Like if you're looking to enter into a field and for example, uh, if you wanna learn something, uh, I asked it to create a syllabus for me, uh, a syllabus on a subject area that I want to learn about. And it, it's pretty accurate drawing on um, major, major canon texts. So things that are cited like a billion times that, you know, the more it's in the quote ether, the more likely it's going to pick yeah. it up here. But for more up to date, uh, going to keywords and citations, I, I use another website site, S C I T E. Yeah. And again, how, how you approach it is, is give it all the variables that you need is that I'm looking for an article that focuses on this and this, um, X and X, Y, um, because I'm doing research and contextualizing your research on this. And it actually gives you suggestions that of articles that maybe not are exactly specifically on that uh, topic, but tangential, tangential and, and helpful. Yeah. So again, emerging suite of tools. We're going to keep all of you posted as these come out. I think we could do a dedicated session on that. Um, just to uh, put a pin in this, Alma, I, I wouldn't, again, use it as a tool to help identify keywords and maybe refine your keywords, but still use some of the traditional methods that, right. that we espouse here of going in and finding existing systematic reviews and harvesting some potential keyword variants from those. Okay. Matt, I want to go on though, because you mentioned skill building. And to me, um, skill building is something really, really important because when you're a grad student, it's a critical time to invest in yourself and build up skills. And ChatGPT is making it easier than ever to d develop customized courses tailored to your needs and your skill level. So tell us a bit about how you approached it because I know you just mastered a subfield very, very rapidly, uh, essentially from scratch. So yeah. how did you go about that? Uh, well, I think... Um... I think there are different levels of approaching this. Is that like I, I in preparation for this, I did a uh, a prompt where I said I was a first year PhD. I gave my time constraints and said that I wanted to do some research on you know this topic. And it gave and I said, how would I go about doing oh, that? Well, let's pop that in. So how did how, how did okay. you frame that? Um, and I think. 
Yeah. Okay. So let's say I'm a first year PhD. Yeah. I have two two courses, two graduates, two graduate courses. Okay. Uh, and I uh, have to do a research assistantship for 20 hours a week. Okay. So you're just saying you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> that as a week. Um, I'm trying all period. I'm trying also, I'm trying to do research on pensions and health. Okay. Yep. How would I structure my week or how would I structure my week and my days? Wait, 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 this is like different. This is kind of on the productivity and organization. I want to focus on how sure. you approach building up the skills. Okay. I do, oh, I do want okay. to come to this. This is, impo oh, this is sorry. important. Sorry. This is important. Sorry, yeah. So um, let, let me bracket this. Let's come back to yeah. that in a second. I want okay. to know how you went about building the competency and the skill. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so anyways, I, I guess I was starting from that point is to get the universe of what I'm doing. But so like, for example, you can ask. Oh, know, oh wait, wait. But are you saying you're saying it's important to set that context first? Well, I think I think you can give it to that context because then it, it, it will draw on what skills you might not need to build. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Then uh, you, you drive the car here, Matt. I just want okay. to make sure we focus on the, this, how you yeah. taught yourself. How, so fast. how would I, how would I structure, um, my, I and also, I would actually do it in a new chat or oh, you do it in a new chat. Okay. Yeah. Cause it kind Why of, a new chat? That, that's interesting. Why? Well, because I think it's fo we're focusing on drawing on different things now. So okay. we're thinking. So I try to couch it uh, in what kind of outcomes I'm doing. So here, organization and skill building. Okay. Um, so it, it, thinking about thinking about your chats it, as folders, I guess is that what what can I all see. go in this folder? And because it seems to have. If, if you're all over the map in your conversations or uh, it also, um, it, I, I think it detracts from um, the answers that you get. Yeah. Uh, okay. So exactly. Someone's giving example prompts here. Um, yeah. But Matt, I want to get your, yours in. So give, give us something concrete. and, and uh, Okay. Let's, let's say like I'm doing, let's just start broad. I'm doing a research project on pensions and health. Okay. I am a first year PhD student in sociology, just because that's what I know. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm a first year PhD, first then uh, period. What are, the, what are some of the skills I would need to build to, um, to generate or generate a research article on that association. Okay. Okay. So let's see what that, that goes with. But I, I, I want to get uh, it, it and build us up there. I just want to get to the point of how you, you picked up the natural experiment method, the new method, so quick. Okay. We, we could go directly in, into that. Yeah. So this, if you, this if is you want. I, I guess I wanted to show entering at a basic level, and then yeah. I can say at an expert level. Okay. Um, so because this doesn't, this might give you again an area to drill down on, but that's kind of assuming you're starting completely. completely right. Blind. It's so so it, it kind of gives you a choose your own adventure. Yeah. Uh, to, so you, you can then drill in on the quantitative and say, okay, I want right. to go down this path. Right. Um, so I'm I'm interested. So I like how it actually gives you all the skills that you need to do, which is yeah. like networking and collaboration. I yeah. didn't think that as a skill. Absolutely. Right? This is exactly so, what we have training, by the way, on and yeah. each of the, these components. You guys can find it in the Facebook group, uh, as I said. Um, and, really valuable there. Okay. So like I so, yeah, now I would go on and say I'm interested in quantitative method in quantitative methods. Yep. Yeah. Um specifically looking at this association using natural experiment design ah. you natural experiment research design okay so, sure. and then, and then what, what are you what are you wanting from uh, it yeah so that 
what are the major resources I can use to learn how to use this method? And what, what are the steps I should take? Uh, like a period, sorry. So make sure don't like, don't have like run on sentences. Okay. Is that, is that like every, every sentence is like structuring chat GPT on tightening in on your outcome. So, so you would leave it here. No, I'm one more sentence. Oh, one more sentence. Okay. Uh, what are my, and what are the steps I can take yep. to learn natural experiment design? Um, but isn't that what you said in the previous sentence or is it different? Well, some resources are different and then oh, okay. steps is it structure, structures it. What, how you can do it. Got it. Um, yep. Okay. So it's giving us some, some background. So it yep. gives it, yeah. Okay. But this might not, uh, okay. These are the steps you can take. Yep. So it gives you some book ideas. Right. So like, I mean, those are pretty good. Um, but this is an example of what you should do to tighten it up. Right. So this was broad. Yeah. Now I, so, well, so say if you want to go drill in on the books, you can go, yeah, go do that. Exactly. So, so when we were working this, I remember Matt, I, I shared with you some suggestions on which books to read that I right. personally plucked out. But so how, how did you take this forward next? So like, um, let me just, can I, I'll pull up. Um, so I guess I would say focusing on textbooks or focusing on major textbooks or or drawing on main journals in economics, sociology, yeah. statistics, yeah. and epidemiology. Yeah. What would be the best yeah. sources for learning natural experiment design? Give okay. me, give me the author, year, and title of the source. So always try to specify as much yeah. as you can. Yeah. Now, do you find it? Oh, uh, oh no. Um, I might be running out of prompts, guys. Um, now we've got we got a comment here while that's pulling up uh saying you you, you give it a prompt yeah. and i've seen this as well tell jet gpt who you are you're a 20-year professional in the field do you do this as well i like you were saying this i'm a first year phd student uh um, i i think it gives you um the i mean telling it the actual level you're at i think is yeah. important because uh -huh. then it gives you better resources to utilize yeah so like I mean, I couldn't, for example, in my field, look at um, uh, like Pearl's book on causality and enter in on that, right? Because okay. it's just not as it, So, not so as you good. could refine the list. I mean, I actually, uh, this can really help you. Um, <laughs> someone says something funny here. After this with ChatGPT, you have lifetime imposter syndrome. But... Uh, it, Actually, yeah. I think it's the opposite. I, I that, think it's the opposite too. Exactly. Say, yeah. say more about that. Well, is that it, it actually reinforces what you already know. And it also gives you an avenue, a low stakes avenue to go learn what you don't. Mm. It's it, so I like, I mean, it's it, everybody has to start somewhere, but it actually gives you up to date to the second places where, hey, I have a low ability in this area and I need to yeah. go, I need to go explore that. Is that yeah. it trains you to be, you know, a good self learner. And then the, I find it helpful to go and ask questions that, right? You might not know. Maybe those things that you're you don't know about, but we're too scared to ask. Right. Other Absolutely. students, professors. So say, can you help me? Can uh, or say, help me understand the difference between a mediating 
and modifying variable, something Great. like that. Yeah. I, I find these things are uh, you know, sometimes where there's subtle distinctions or something else not clear. Um, and this is, so it's just instantly gets it for you. And if it still doesn't make sense, you can poke back at it again until it does make sense. So I always ask it to, to give me an example. So give, okay. show me, show what is like your question? What is the relationship between this? And please give me examples for each one. Okay, so this is why we need your prompts, Matt, because, you know, just what comes off to me, you've got to hone this, but it right. gives some examples here, but... Yeah. Uh, but but, like, but, but when, when you're doing it, you're always trying to get con context for associations because, uh, like, for example, when I was going through natural experiment design um, and I went into ideas about weighting, like the inverse probability of treatment weighting yeah. and stuff, is that when you get into highly technical fields and you have no idea is that most people actually can't give you an example offhand because yeah. it's really, it's really hard. Well, so that's a nice one. Inverse probability weighting is a complex concept that a lot of people would have trouble understanding. Yeah. Can you explain, do you ask you to explain it in simple yeah. terms? Yeah. Can you, uh, can you explain in simple the terms of and give an example? You know, like, and, and so how be, I, how so, would you frame this? I, I'm just going okay. to tell us how to reframe that properly. So, so can you give me an, or can you explain inverse of probability treatment weighting and how it is applied in whatever field you are in? So I'd always contextualize it in where you, where you are. So, you know, and how it is. Applied okay. So, in, so let's say to ep epidemiology, for example, right. Right. But you wanted to do say, um, you put it, break it into two sentences. Please give an yeah. example of what could be meaningfully applied. Okay. So let, let's see if it, if it can do that. But this is what I'm saying. I think this works. Somebody's asking, while this is pulling up, someone's asking, does this work in all fields and disciplines? Do you yes. think that's something that can benefit from Yes. I think, I think yes, too. Um, is that the only thing that I would say is that if your field is like, I mean, if your field is a bit more advanced than 2021, like there's some... So, like some areas in biology, you know, computer science, et cetera. But yeah. I mean, to get, to start out your PhD or your master's, it's going to get you to the front of the line, at least for most, most concepts in your field. Okay. So this is, this is, okay. I can see this being really helpful right here. Um, uh, the, in, in the explanation that, uh, and, this, if you didn't understand it before, if you guys wanted to learn about inverse probability weighting, extra bonus here. This is, this is a nice explanation. Um, so, okay. So, so did you do this? Did you find as you're reading textbooks, maybe you didn't understand something you went in and asked chat GPT? Yeah. And I, I guess, I don't know if I'm, I call it like super learning. <laughs> super is learning. That, super like, learning. Like that. Is that because it's, it's a time where anything that is not clear to you, is that if you can frame it in terms of a question or a prompt, and you can just keep asking it for different examples till you get it. Is okay. that, you know, like, I mean, I asked it, I've never really understood degrees of freedom, for example, or like wh why is it important? And yeah. I, I asked, you know, chat GPT, why it's important, not why it's applied and stuff like that. And after, because it was something that I was embarrassed to ask my 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 supervisor because yeah. you know they're they're a stats god. <laughs> and yeah, it's such I, a basic. I, I remember basic, degrees of freedom. Yeah, or you might be confused. What's r squared? And you yeah, just go ask like what something like those, that is those small things, and then contextualizing it in an example, and it like it makes intuitive sense because right. I feel like being as being a stats teacher or in my past is that it, it is incredibly difficult to conceptualize these very highly um, conceptual uh, um, concepts in yeah. so far as I like, you know, how do I contextualize a mean or how do I contextualize these very abstract is a better word, yeah. very, very abstract concepts. And yeah. it seems to me that ChatGPT gives really concrete, you know, examples yeah. that that I would never be able to just on on the fly give. Yeah. All right. Listen, Matt, we got five more minutes with Courtney here. So I want to get okay. to your examples on uh, on productivity and then you and I can go back through some of the questions. So how, so sure. coming back to that last one and Courtney, first, before we do that, any reactions from you or thoughts on what we've seen so far? 
Yeah, I, it's really interesting. It occurs to me like in the past, if if for instance, you were trying to figure out something that you were too embarrassed to ask your supervisor, you would have to spend hours on Google, like you right. finding the website that it was clear, like it made it clear enough for you to understand and you would go through. But yeah, I can see how this just speeds things up immensely. Yeah, super learning. I, it's yeah. really stuck with me. Uh, I like that, <laughs> Okay, Matt, tell us now about the kind of super productivity. How, how have you used this to boost your productivity? That's something so, I know a lot of people struggle with. So I think one of the major questions as being a first generation PhD is that I had no idea how to structure my day or what a typical prototypical day was, you know, doing my PhD. And I, I feel like nobody really thinks about mm. workflow processes yeah. or anything about, you know, how you're maximizing your cognitive time. If you have even thought of that in the first place, yeah, which most people really important have. conversation to have with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Is that so like, I mean, I think you can do it at each level because it, it seems to understand is just like, you know, give it a context of where you were at, like say, uh, I'm writing, I'm at the state, I'm writing my dissertation. Like this is as a prompt, say I'm, I'm writing, writing my, my, my PhD dissertation. Yeah. Okay. Detail yep. a writing schedule that is from Monday to Friday. Yep. Uh, and does not go over 40 hours okay. to get uh, my dissertation done in six months. Okay. Cool. I like that. So this is kind of really helping you structure a plan. Not, it just might right. not work for everybody, but... Uh... Right. But it gives you an example, which you prototypically never really... Yeah, I mean, I think having structure in your day and having a routine is is one of the most I think indispensable it's essential. In, in ingredients that just we as humans need to uh, to be our best. Um, so what I like about the prompts is that it actually takes into account, or I've, I've looked at this before, but it takes into account your mental well-being. <laughs> yeah. Is that it also talks about getting sleep or, I mean... But it, it at least gives you some sort of framework to uh, be effective at writing. Yeah. Uh, then the next prompt we can ask, how can I maximize my cog or best cognitive best cognitive hours That's a great using question. this schedule? Matt, using say, it, say it's giving you this schedule and like the way that it's like it's the way that it's writing up, you think, no, actually, that doesn't really sound good. You can ask it to regenerate, right? And it will give Correct. you a new a new way of thinking about it. Yeah. So exactly. And what I like about what you, you just said is that then you can tweak it, give it some constraints. I have these constraints. You know, this won't work for me. Or yeah, whatever. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I've got to take care yeah. of kids here. What do yeah. I just do? So I asked this about the cognitive schedule. By the way, we do have an architecture of your perfect day training in the Facebook group that a lot of students have gotten value out of in thinking about how to structure their perfect day in, in working as a grad student. Um, I like this about peak cognitive hours. So uh, I think that productivity side is that it's something that's important to all of us. Uh, we have to, it's a cliche marathon, not a sprint. Again, you've got to day after day show up and, and produce. And really really makes sense to critically reflect on your your mental well-being your risks of burnout and what conditions help you be at your peak performance just like any athlete would think about going to the gym i performed really well today why how can i reproduce that sustainably uh same thing you're kind of like a mental athlete and you want to start really monitoring and understanding your own productivity this is a really nice way uh to do that i yeah. I, I like this point a lot you're making too just generally matt about peak cognitive hours right I also, I also, oh. Oh, we got to say bye to Courtney. Uh, okay. well, I think we're coming to an end here, Matt. We're going to okay. wrap up in about five minutes. Sounds, but uh, Courtney, good. any final thoughts for you, Dash? And then Matt and I will, will wrap up. No, I'm excited to watch the replay to see where, where else this goes. And I'm excited to talk about this more in the future. I'm going to play around with this on this weekend for yeah. sure. That's what I want for right. all of you watching. Go play around with this because we've hit yeah. three big areas. Research, skill building, productivity, guaranteed. There is something for everybody here that... Uh, 
All right. I mean, I've been using it most recently. I use it to say I want to make a heat map and I had it make some code in Excel to make making the heat map easy. And yeah. saved me. That's amazing. At least, saved at least an hour. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go through more examples like this. Courtney, good to have you join us. We, All right. We'll see you guys. Everyone. By the Thank way, Courtney, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Uh, they can message me on Facebook. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Uh, perfect. There. All right. All righty. Good, good one, Bye, Courtney. Guys. Um, okay, Matt, um, I, I want to just, uh, any, anything else you want to add here on productivity? Um, I, I think like, I guess, especially writing, because I think writing is one of the harder subjects to get into a routine mm. with, is that I think ChatGPT can be a really useful tool in like giving you, um, well, feedback, but also consistency, like doing an actual schedule. Like I would ask, you know, what, how, what are the most important tenets of being an effective writer? Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, you guys can tap some of this from ChatGPT. We also have some dedicated training, like our peer system, that you guys do not want to miss out on. I just want to say, somebody is asking here, can we have a summary about ChatGPT use for researchers? In fact, Matt uh, has developed, uh, together with us, a set of prompts in each of these areas. Uh, we're just doing it on the fly here, but all the principles we, we've talked about uh, we're going to share with you and come back and you guys are all welcome uh, to the document. For example, how Matt said, think about your different chats as folders, the, these types of things. So that's all going to be down and you guys uh, can all have 100% free access from us because this is going to be really helpful to you. Um, Matt, they're also asking how can they find you. By the way, um, I guess on Facebook, I'll be Facebook. Matt, yeah, Matt's just, also yes. in the group and, and available uh, as am I. Uh, we're we're here to help. And if you're getting value out of these sessions, uh, we love when you share ideas of what's going to be most valuable to you that we can you know, tailor our content to your needs as they evolve. And the odds are, if you're struggling with something, at least 30 other people in the group are struggling with the same thing. So you're, you're really helping the community by bringing this up to us. We also, you'll notice in the group, we have different ongoing chats around academic writing, quantitative methods. Um, tap those, it's just a great way to get direct feedback and con uh, contact uh, with us. We're, we're here to help. Um, there's several questions that have come out. Um, I just wanna flag where to get resources. We've got a dedicated uh, training on how JetGPT can help with a literature review. You can find that on my YouTube channel. Um, and we already talked about some things at the very beginning of the session about outlining and developing a conceptual framework, things that you need, especially for a literature review, um, because you don't have the systematic framework to work with necessarily. Uh, and the other question I wanted to take here, how can ChatGPT assist in data extraction for systematic review? Uh, my take is currently it can't. That that may change in the future. Matt, any other thoughts on that? Yeah. I don't I don't think so for that specific, yeah. unless it, it creates, you know, macros that it can um, uh, to... Yeah. Exactly. Somebody highlighted a macro extension. We haven't tested all these, but we yeah. will be testing them and we will give you our feedback on what's working really well and what's working less well. It's a rapidly moving space. I mean, Matt, six months ago, none of this was even right. conceivable. So, so it's if you don't use these tools, you, you're you're missing out. You're, you're going to get left behind. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I think uh, just, you know, in closing is that I, I think if I were to use like what you said, how can ChatGPT do X while you're working on your PhD? Or can it help me? The answer is usually yes. And it most likely will shave off maybe a day, maybe two days of work. So, I mean, those all add up for your, for, uh, your career going through grad school. 100%. Matt, look, just a big thank you for joining us today. We always okay. follow back up. Those of you who have been watching the replay or, or, or have questions, we always follow back up in the chat and respond. So pop those through. Um, you know, we listen to you. So if you want more sessions like this, more live workshops, uh, let us know and we'll set this up. And uh, Matt, I think you might get uh, drawn into more of these sessions because it seems like uh, people have really, really appreciated uh, what you've shared with us. And I know I learned learned a lot from the session that I, I can go apply tomorrow. I mean, you've just the way I was even approaching these prompts, you, you're just several steps ahead of me. And that, that really is a skill worth developing. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, I and, agree. Day and age, guys. And look, if, if you if you like the session, hit like. It helps us reach more people with the session. So thank you. We, we appreciate it. Um, 
uh, it's kind of a labor of love joining you, but we, we don't want you to go through all that hardship and frustration uh, that we had. All right. Take care, everybody. And uh, we will we will all be in touch with several of you in the DMs. Thanks again, Matt. Yeah.